Um, there's a picture of David Reese up here, which I forgot that I was supposed to probably start with a blank page. I've been working on, David Reese is going to be talking tomorrow, and I'm the executive producer of his um, podcast, Election Profit Makers, which is what I've been doing like every, I've been executive producing every second of this festival until now. And I like this picture because you can, he, film, he tapes a lot of it in my apartment, and we made a mic stand out of a hanger, which I feel like is very Portland. And I feel like as soon as this hits the internet, I'm gonna like be, wa I, watch, I walked by and saw like typewriter table today. Like I feel like this is gonna be like in the stores immediately as soon as I leave <laughs> this stage. Um, okay, so I've been working on uh, his podcast this whole weekend, but I also have my own podcast, Mystery Show. Um, <laughs> And I was trying to think of like a visual, like they asked me if I wanted to have slides and I was like, at first I, was, I said no because I just get so stressed out at the idea of the plugging in of the slides. And then I was like, well, I guess maybe, I was trying to think of something I could show visually. So if you guys have listened to Mystery Show and you've heard the belt buckle episode and you don't follow me on Instagram, then this is that. Have you seen it before? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so this is a belt buckle. So I have a show where I solve mysteries, and this is one of the mysteries I solved was returning this belt buckle to its rightful owner, Hans Jordy. And I feel like I love showing this picture because I feel like it's one of the, again, radio a lot of the times, the way you describe something, it's not necessarily better than the real thing, but it, it doesn't, you're usually disappointed when you've seen um, the real thing. It's really upsetting to be on the radio and know that fact, because when people meet you, like they just, it's not even like they think worse or better, they just can't wrap their head around what they're looking at. Um, and so, like they just, and they can't like disguise it or be polite or anything, but I feel like this, when I show the belt buckle, it's, I feel, it, it probably doesn't exactly line up with how you imagined it, but I feel like it is even more beautiful than perhaps you imagined it. Um, and, I didn't know how to import videos onto this, but there's, I have a video of, um, that's the, that toaster, when you pop it down, is the toast that pops up. It's really a great belt buckle. Um, so, it's, I'm looking at it right now, I'm just like dazzled, right here. Um, so, I started making Mystery Show in my apartment. I did not have the high-tech hanger even then. Like, I, I didn't, really even mean to make a show. I had worked for This American Life for a long time and I had done radio stories, but I, like I didn't actually have a really strong desire to have my own show. Like, because This American Life, if you have an idea for a story, you can do it. It's not like they, they're not like tyrants about it, you know what I mean? Like I, every time I had an idea that was good, if it, that worked, they would say yes to. So I, di I didn't feel like a complete, I didn't really feel like there wasn't an outlet for like my radio stories. And so then, but then I kind of heard that there was, this was a while ago. So I didn't, I had the idea that I liked mysteries before I had the idea for wanting a show. And it was more like, I just kind of wanted to like see if I could create like a vehicle for me to solve mysteries way before, that, that definitely came before I want to have my own radio show and then and it's this really weird thing that happened because like even though I had done radio stories for so long when I thought of the idea like I definitely didn't think it was going to work and I, what I find interesting about the creative process at least mine is that it never it's like it depletes every single time like I go through the same phases every time we're thinking it's not going to work it's not going to be good I suck it just never I kind it's just like the bio thing I cannot believe there's not it doesn't it doesn't even accelerate. If anything, the stretches get longer and longer. And so like, it wasn't like, I was like, I know how to do radio, I can make a show, this is the next step. It just was like, it's impossible, it's never gonna happen. And I forced myself, and because I was in my apartment, like it was really, when you're like working in your apartment alone is really when, like it is so exhausting how much your brain can tell you things aren't gonna work. Like it is so loud and like, unrelenting. And so I basically went to go, get taped to get away from being inside my apartment, telling me I couldn't do it. Like, I just had to, like, get out of the house. And the first 
um, mystery that I thought of was uh, to, that my friend had rented a video. Um, she had rented Must Love Dogs from a video store, and she had gone to return it the next day after having her like 24-hour rom-com, you know, viewing cycle completed. And she um, went to return it, and the video store was closed for business. Like in, in one, in w overnight, it had shuttered. And she had signed up and become a member of the video store, and like, was all, you know, like filled out a card and put in her wallet. And she's also the kind of person, it's amazing that we're friends, because I'm like, uh, everything about her, I'm the opposite of this, but she is the kind of person who actually like notices, like returns movies on time and notices charges on her credit card that aren't supposed, like I cannot even imagine that feeling, but that's <laughs> what she is. She's like this alien that I'm friends with. And so, um, and she, uh, so she, you know, assigned me to the case and I like went, down to where the video store was every day and I tried to find what happened. And it felt crazy because, like, what the hell was I doing? Like, I was, like, trying to solve a case and it, I felt like such a fraud. And you already feel like a fraud when you're doing stories anyway, but on top of it, I was, like, a fake detective. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I didn't have, like, the right gear. I still don't have the right gear and that also upsets me. Like, I don't know what girl detectives are supposed to wear. Like, I know they're supposed to wear the ones that I don't want to be, but like, I want to be, I don't know what the like, girl Columbo version is, <laughs> other than, like I, the clothing, I think about it so much, other than just like, not ironing. I don't know what, I don't know what, I, I don't know how to get what I need out of this. And so, all that was happening, and then also, it wasn't like This American Life Story, because This American Life Story is, you know what you're on track, you know what you're looking for. Like, you have the idea, and you're just like, laser focused to it. And, with, and the only thing that I knew was I was trying to get to a solution, but I had no idea how to make that happen. And it makes you think about things a different way when you're interviewing people, because when you're doing a, like a This American Life Story, or like a, another kind of story where you know, like, what you, in, in those kind of stories, you know what you're trying to hear. You know what the goal is. And this, what's different about Mystery Show for me is I didn't even know what that was. Like, I didn't even know what was something that I was supposed to manipulate to make happen. You know what I mean? I wasn't doing anything except really listening. And so I kept, I went downtown, looked for this video store, did not wear the right clothes, I'm sure of that. And, um, and, uh, and I just kept going into like, diners and stores and, and parking garages and it all felt like so fuzzy and murky and the whole time I was like, this is ridiculous, it's never gonna work. And then I walked into a bar. Actually, I walked into a hotel that then led me to this bar and it was this old bar filled with people and um, there was a waitress there and she'd obviously been working there like since the bar had opened and, uh, and, and she told me about a video store that had burned down in a fire. And then she turned to like one of the regulars sitting at the bar. Oh, not that. Tom, what was the name of the original video store down on Greenwich? What was the name of it? Uh, I, used to, I was a member. Remember the old man who worked there with Miss Two Fingers? You know, I saw Madonna in there once. You saw Madonna in there once. Uh, I'll, I'll think of the name in a second. What was it called? But I, I was a member. I mean, I was, you know, I've been here 30 years, so. They had good foreign films, which I like, you know. What's your favorite foreign film? La Strada. I don't know. It was, a, it was a very touching film for me. Because I identify with the character Zampano. I know I mean, he was a bad guy, but I, I, thought, I thought that that love affair with uh, Jessamina, you know, he, he saw the light, but it was too late. The last scene of him crying on the beach, you know, it was so sad. Do you relate to that part, like seeing the light too late? Oh. You know, I put the shell around me and I'm living with it. I put walls in front of me. It's not good, but that's the way I've been. Do you have kids? No. 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 I never married. It's closed a few times, but the last time was probably about 20 years ago. 90, 92. Yeah. She was a few years older than me and she didn't want to have kids and my whole point of marriage, why do you get married unless you're going to have kids, you know? So, believe me, I've, I'm lamenting. Like the strata. Yeah. That's true. It's never too late to knock those walls down. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've seen that film hundreds of times and I have it on tape. You watch it a lot? I might watch it tonight, actually. <laughs> the hell is the name of that video store? <laughs> So, I don't know how, it, out of context, I'm not even sure how it sounds, but, uh, like, it's, it's such a, it's a small moment, right? Um, but what I, and I've done, I had done so many stories before that, but when I got that tape, I could just, it felt really different, because it felt like, it just felt like, not only was I trying to, you know, follow the, like, the trail of evidence to get to the solution, but I was really, truly following the story. And I wasn't, it, you, you feel weird to me when you're, like, I, I don't know, I get very tired um, sometimes, like, when you're doing interviews and you don't want to, you know what you want to hear and you don't want to, like, guide it. And it just was, like, this really nice feeling of being, like, we're having a conversation and because he's talking to me, I now know where the story is going to go. And I didn't know when I left the house today that that was going to happen. And it was just, it just, it felt real and it felt like interesting. And I felt really awake when listening to him. And I think that's a terrible word that I'm going to regret saying as soon as I watch this later on. But I feel like, but I did, it felt really different. And I, in that moment, as soon as I talked to him, I was like, I can do this show. Like, this is a show that I'm interested in and I want to keep doing it. And I feel like everything that I've ever done, anytime I try to do something that I'm not interested in, it just falls apart. I can't muster enthusiasm. But when I do get excited, then I'm able to just like completely throw myself into it. And it's really hard. You can't manufacture those situations, you don't know when they're going to happen, but I do feel like it's really important that when they do happen, you don't, uh, you respect them, because it's it just, it, you can't predict it. And so I went home, and I kind of like anchored the episode with that piece of tape, and I finished the episode, and I recorded voice tracks in my bedroom, and put it all together, and I had an episode that I liked at the end, and I was really proud of it, and it felt really different to me, and then... I waited four years for cereal to come out, basically, and people to care about podcasts. Because, like, what happened was, like, <laughs> like, it was just, like, a thing that I was really excited about that literally lived on my computer. And I'm pretty sure, like, not just one computer, like, computers died and it had to get transferred over, and I do not back things up. And, like, there were so many times, it came so close to not existing just from my being, like, there's just no way to, you can't like transfer files, like it's impossible. And so like, it's just, I had like a computer that was like so broken and had like the key, the letters were taped onto it with this like big thick tape that had pictures of panda bears on it, like tumbling, it was so rickety. And that's where the show was. And then I was really about to give up. And then yeah, I guess people just love true crime. And so then, and then, and then podcasts like took off. And within, and so the first year that Mystery Show came out, um, that, so then at the end of that year, this happened, you know? And it was suddenly like Mr. Robot and podcasts were in the same uh, chart. <laughs> um, and I had thought that, hold on. I had thought that this, I don't know, I had thought this would be the weirdest thing that happened for me <laughs> during Mystery Show. Um, <laughs> I did an episode where um, I, my friend thought, um, saw a picture of her with uh, Britney Spears holding her book that no one had ever read. And she wanted me to get to the bottom of it and it ended up with me going to a meet and greet with Britney Spears and, um, and this happening. And I thought this was gonna be like the weirdest picture, but, in, but because podcast blew up so much, this was the weirdest picture that I have now for Mystery Show. <laughs> so you have no idea how surreal that felt. Um, I was on Conan O'Brien. This happened. Simpsons did a, sh did a, a shout out to Mystery Show. This is another episode about a knotted jean jacket. That right up there, this jean jacket that you can't, you can barely make out. I'm not just making it up, I'm not just like thinking I'm so excited, I'm so famous. They really did reference Mystery Show, it's a real reference. It was crazy, it was very, very, very weird. And so I, and so what happened was, what I hadn't, I, I hadn't anticipated Mystery Show getting that big. Um, 
you do a weird thing. I feel like when I was in my apartment making mystery show, I was thinking about this. Like I wasn't like I didn't think anybody was gonna hear it because I don't think I'm like I don't know how to keep a journal and I can only clean my house if someone's coming over. Like like I know that I want an audience, like I crave an audience. I'm really great, grateful you guys are here. Um, <laughs> but you also have to kind of trick yourself and did not you have to care about the audience but not do it for the audience because then you get really messed up in the head. There's this, you have to have this balance. And so what I didn't, Mystery Show came out, you know, there was a, we had done, I had finished three of the episodes before we first launched it and then we were working on three of them when it came out. And it was this really weird thing where you're suddenly like out there and exposed and people are tweeting at you and, and, and telling you they like it and you're still trying to work on the thing while you know people are enjoying it and you're trying to like block them out at the same time. And because the internet exists now, like, there'd be episodes where I was like trying to get them up and there'd be people just like writing to me being like, it's okay, you can do it, get some sleep, it's okay. just make sure you're eating well. Like it was so <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> um, and, and then you want, and there's also, because now podcasts also have advertisers and so like then the advertisers want them to come out and I wanted, to, and you just keep wanting to, I wanted to show the advertisers the tweets and be like, no, sleep's really important to the people, it's more than, more than the ads and like, it is so strange. And, um, and then uh, Mystery Show went on, so then the first season ended and then there's this really weird feeling where you're like, you well, you know, I keep saying, so I feel, it feels really weird because you think you shouldn't do anything that doesn't involve what you're making. That's like the strangest part of being identified, I think, with something that you make is like everything else feels like cheating. Like every, not just anything, like when I, well, definitely when I tweet about the Game of Thrones, I'm so full of shame and I feel like, <laughs> like I just, and I also so need to talk about it with someone, so I, I mean, it's just like big, I can't resist, but I feel anything I publicly put out there feels really weird, but also even just kind of when you're being a person feels a little stranger because you don't quite understand, like there's a person that you are when you're making something and you fall into this zone, and then there's a person you are when you're just like being some, you know, living your life, and it's, it's a really strange combo, I feel, to navigate. And the more success you have with something and the more that you are consumed by that thing, I think it gets harder to kind of figure out the off hours of your life. And then on top of it, there's also stuff like, I mean, this is just, these are just the tweets I've gotten since I've been here. <laughs> um, so for, but for real, Starly, when's Mystery Show coming back? Where's the mystery show? These mysteries are not gonna solve themselves. Am I supposed to be blocking out these people's names? <laughs> Sorry, people, if you're watching. Um, this one I got this morning. Can you guys read this? That's a gif of him begging. And so it's a very, it's a very strange thing. I feel like it's a very, very strange feeling to have where you're like, you, you, you want, it's like you want the, you, I feel like I want, it's like when you want the movie to kind of end in a credits roll and that's kind of what you expect, but instead you like go on and do all your errands. And like, and you also have to think about, it's so strange also like you're, you're, all, you're always sorting your thoughts in your head, like which is the thought that goes into that sentence that entertains the masses and which is the thought that's like a regular thought that I just keep for myself. Like I feel like it just gets incredibly, incredibly confusing. And um, which is why I do stuff like, you know, produce other things. Because I feel you also have to, in order to get not lost in kind of the muck of it, you also have to be constant, you still have to be following that trail that goes on. And just like in the show where you're, it's just like about, you know, it's in the show I'm literally following my curiosity, but I think in real life I have to do that too. And I think everyone I've ever met who makes something that is, that is the trail that they follow. And I think it's a very important thing to remember um, as we all try to navigate this strange, confusing new world that I think we've all been thrown into. So that's really what I mainly want to say is just like, kind of like, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be teaching you stu guys stuff. I, can't, I don't even know if there's going to be a lesson in this, but I feel <laughs> that um, my big lesson, and I try to remember too, is just to like, if it makes me feel interested and excited and not very, very tired, that's an important thing, and that's how ultimately <laughs> the, the bigger work will happen. And the last picture I wanted to show you was, 
Oh yeah, that, that. So I made a t-shirt that is, um, the Mystery Show t-shirt is, has a Jake Gyllenhaal height chart on the back. Um, <laughs> because in case you see him, which everyone sees him but me, uh, you're supposed, you can measure him and every one of those, every height is the same height, which is his height. So you can, no matter how tall you are, it'll always be his height. But, um, <laughs> But when I was on Conan and he was there, this is him holding his height chart, which I felt like was like a Black Mirror episode. Like it was just too much for me to handle. And so that's like my parting event. Okay, thank you.